We've seen a number of major disruptions to the solar industry in 2025, whether it's the wave of large solar company bankruptcies or how Tesla has innovated a new switching mechanism using meter collar adapters. In today's video, I'm gonna be sharing with you my top five solar market trends of 2025 and make sure that you watch till the end because I'm gonna be giving you my thoughts on how the industry can recover from here. The smarter way to go solar. All right, now in today's video, we're gonna be talking about my top five solar market trends for 2025. Uh, and the first one is the death of the solar finance company business model. Now, as I'm recording this video just a few days ago, both Sonova and Mosaic Solar announced bankruptcy filings. Now that's on top of over 100 solar company bankruptcies in the 18 months prior. So why are solar companies failing? And why are so many solar finance companies in particular failing? Well, let's explain first, what is, what is a solar finance company exactly? Because a solar finance company is not, not a bank. They're not a traditional bank lender. Typically, a solar finance company is a third-party company that borrows money from banks, then uses that money to make loans to consumers and to fund solar projects, and then they repackage those loans and sell them off in tranches to investors on Wall Street. Well, why would Wall Street investors want to buy or want to invest in solar loans? Well, when things just got started, the idea was that solar loans had a very low risk profile. In fact, at one point, the default rate on solar loans was less than half of a percent, which is lower than auto loans and lower than home mortgages as well. So the idea here was if you could offer an investor a decent return with relatively low risk compared to other investment options, there would be a lot of investor appetite for this. And that worked well at the beginning. Of course, this only really works if the solar systems are functioning and saving consumers, saving homeowners on their electric bill. But what we saw is as more and more solar contractors began to fail and more of those systems that, that came with the 25 year bumper to bumper warranty, when more of those systems fell into disrepair and were no longer producing power and providing electric bill savings for the consumers, many of the consumers simply decided to stop paying the monthly payment for the solar loan. Uh, and of course, that's what kills the whole thing because the solar finance company relies on being able to continually sell these batches of loans to Wall Street investors uh, and, and having those loans looked at as a high quality investment product. But what I'm hearing now from my industry contacts is that many borrowers, and whether they have marginal credit or very strong credit, simply choose to not pay their solar loan payment if the contractor that performed the original installation went out of business and nobody's there to make repairs on the system. And that's put solar finance companies in a really tight spot because although contractually they are not responsible to do maintenance and repairs on the system, what the solar finance companies cannot afford is for borrowers to start defaulting and then investors and Wall Street to perceive that the quality of the, that credit or the quality of those investment vehicles is lower than how it had been sold. So getting back to the news of the day, uh, Mosaic Solar Finance has just declared bankruptcy and that's on top of several other solar finance companies that have also declared bankruptcy or gone out of business. Uh, of course, you had Sunlight Financial that declared bankruptcy in 2023. Uh, Enium Capital Group went out of business. Uh, most recently, we had Mosaic Solar that filed for bankruptcy over the weekend. Uh, and I think it's only a matter of time until the other solar finance providers like Good Leap and Dividend are faced with similar challenges and they may have to restructure or close up business as well. Now, I should explain here, there is a distinction here between solar finance companies like the ones I just described and traditional direct bank lenders. With a traditional direct bank lender, you can apply as a homeowner directly with the bank, understand what your terms of financing are, what your cost of financing is, and typically you can do that with little or no dealer fees. And yes, I know dealer fees is another one of these topics that we don't like to talk about when it comes to solar finance, but typically these third-party solar finance companies, if you wanna borrow money for a solar project and get a competitive interest rate, you have to pay dealer fees. Now, dealer fees are fees that the solar finance company charged to the contractor, and the contractor has to pass that cost along to the customer. But oftentimes, those fees are not disclosed. So if a customer looks at a proposal, they may think they're only paying for parts and labor. 
not realizing that the cost of that parts and labor has been inflated to cover the cost of the dealer fee. And in some cases, that dealer fee could make up to 40% of the total project cost. Now, when I started doing solar financing, dealer fees were as little as 7%, and so consumers barely noticed any price difference, whether they paid cash or financed. But with dealer fees now approaching 20, 30, and even 40% for some loan products, it has a massive impact on the cost of a solar system for a homeowner. All right, the second major trend in 2025 is replacing gateways with meter collar adapters. Now, pretty much all solar is going to solar with battery storage, uh, especially if you're in places like California, but we expect that trend to continue across the country as fewer and fewer utilities offer true one-for-one -one net metering buyback programs. So that means most people that are gonna be going solar are gonna be installing some sort of battery storage with their solar. Now that battery storage typically will do two functions. It will provide emergency backup power uh, and you might use it for self-consumption or time of use avoidance as well. But in order to use a solar and battery system for emergency backup power, you have to have some way that you can disconnect the home from the electric grid so you're not, you're not sending voltage from your battery out onto the electric grid, especially if the grid is being repaired, but still be able to energize that power into the home. So that, that device that, that does that, that switching is called a, mi a microgrid interconnection device, or MID. Um, in the past, we may have just called it a transfer switch. If you're, you're familiar with whole house generators, typically you have a transfer switch, or we would abbreviate as an ATS, automatic transfer switch, which would allow the home to disconnect from the utility, but still allow the generator to energize in the house. So with a solar battery backup system, you need something to do that same function. And we typically would do them with what we would call maybe a gateway or a system controller or a hub. Yeah, and I know all the different manufacturers, they, they all call it something different, but basically it's the transfer switch. It's the way that you can switch off from the grid and still energize secure power in the house. So Tesla came up with an innovative new way to do this where basically the, there's an adapter that fits around your electric meter that will do the disconnecting from the grid for you based on the signal that it receives from the inverter. And of course the advantage to this is that you as an installer now do not really have to worry about modifying the inside the house wiring to complete a battery backup install. All of that switching can be done right there at the meter base so, so you as a contractor do not have to take on any risk of modifying the in-house wiring or, or you as a homeowner don't have the additional disruption of the, the contractor having to cut up your drywall or pull circuits in and out of your electrical panel. That entire switching can be done right there at the meter base. Uh, and of course, there are several other providers that are innovating solutions like that as well, including Connector, which is allowing their Islander product to be used with other inverter manufacturers, uh, as well as Schneider Electric as part of their new Schneider Home Package. Okay, now the third major trend that we're seeing in 2025 is the evolution of solar and battery storage from just an individual stovepipe system to part of a whole home integrated smart energy management system, which typically will include solar, battery storage, load control, EV charging, could include thermostat control for your HVAC, uh, as well as a generator backup option as well. Uh, and all of those systems able to operate intelligently and communicate with each other to provide a consistent user experience as far as your home's energy management system. Now, of course, this means that you as a solar contractor out there are going to be expected to manage a lot more complexity today than what you may have only two or three years ago when you were installing grid-tied solar systems only. You have to now manage battery storage and then smart integration with all of these other home energy systems, again, like EV charging and load control, because your end user, your end customer, is gonna expect all of that to work together seamlessly, and it's gonna be you probably that, that receives the first phone call uh, if something in that ecosystem breaks down. So you contractors, make sure that you uh, really do your homework and prepare for the additional complexity that's coming because the solar products and then the solar manufacturers 
are offering these more integrated whole home energy management solutions. And that's actually a great time to introduce today's video sponsor, Schneider Electric and the new Schneider Home. If you're a contractor or electrician considering which solar and energy management system to offer, then you need to take a look at the new Schneider Home. The Schneider Home provides an all-in-one solution for solar, storage, EV charging, and intelligent load control. The integrated design reduces the total number of components, allowing you to dramatically lower material and labor cost. Schneider Home uses equipment that contractors and electricians already know, like the Square D QO plug-on neutral load center. For over 100 years, Schneider has been helping factories and office buildings optimize energy, and now this technology is available for U.S. homes. Schneider Home is the perfect solution for new construction homes or those needing a main panel upgrade. So if you'd like to learn more information, you can go directly to the Schneider Home commercial website or click the link in the description below so you can sign up to be a certified installer right away. Thank you Schneider Electric for supporting the channel and for sponsoring today's video. Now, continuing on that trend, a number four is what I would call the convergence of everything onto a single platform or onto a single operating system. You know, in the past, it was not uncommon to see us mixing and matching best of breed components from different manufacturers. We might use an inverter from one company, we might pull a battery from a different company, and we might pull a load control or an EV charger from yet a third company. And as the solar installer, it was sort of your job to integrate all those things and put everything together. But what we're seeing now is a continuing trend in 2025 is the convergence of all of those functions onto a single platform where you have a single app to, to monitor and control everything and all of those components are coming from a single manufacturer. Uh, and frankly, I think this is probably a good thing if in, in terms of providing consistency and end user experience, I've seen a lot of cases in the past, particularly between inverter companies and battery companies, where if the communication did not work exactly perfect, the battery would just disconnect basically and leave the home without power uh, or without backup power. So I do think that although we, you might be losing a little bit of design independence, having all of your major home energy management system components coming from a single manufacturer will overall yield a better end user experience. And finally, the fifth major trend for 2025 is bi-directional EV charging finally about ready for prime time. Now, when we talk about bi-directional EV charging, this is the ability to interface your electric vehicle with your home's electric and solar and storage system, and that vehicle becomes basically a two-way appliance. Of course, you, you can pull energy in either from the grid or from solar panels to charge the vehicle battery, uh, but under certain cases, that vehicle can actually discharge its battery into the home uh, either to provide secure backup power into the home uh, or in certain cases you actually may want to dump your excess energy in your vehicle out to the grid if the grid is experiencing high demand and they're willing to pay you a premium for any extra energy that you might be able to provide. Now, of course, if you haven't seen the previous video where we've, we've shown you a, a successful test of this technology using some of the top brand electric vehicles like the Ford F-150 Lightning, uh, the Rivian, as well as the Mercedes-Benz EQB, uh, you can go back and watch that previous video where we walk through this technology in more detail. Now, not all EV manufacturers and not all solar equipment manufacturers are officially supporting the technology today. But as you'll see in the previous video, the technology functionally works. And really all that's holding us up now is negotiations between the vehicle manufacturers and the solar equipment manufacturers to, to set standards and limits of just to how much of the electric vehicle battery they're going to allow you to use. Okay, so where are we going from here? I think it goes without saying that new solar business models are going to emerge out of this. Uh, as I mentioned earlier, I think the traditional solar finance company where which they charge dealer fees to get lower interest rates, I think that business model is going away. Uh, in fact, as I'm recording this now, there are over 2,000 lawsuits pending against companies like Good Leap and Dividend and, you know, basically companies that provided financing to the consumer for a solar power system, but in many cases, the solar power system never got installed or it was never turned on, and now the homeowner is getting a bill for the solar loan and they're still getting a full electric bill. Uh, obviously, we don't expect that kind of situation to last for long, and the courts are involved now to work on sorting that out. I also think there's a huge opportunity for those that want to get into solar service. 
Uh, again, every time a solar contractor goes bankrupt, there's a, a homeowner out there with an abandoned solar system or an or orphaned solar system. And since the contractor who did the original install is not going to be around to keep that system healthy, he or she is going to need to find somebody that can provide operations and maintenance and repairs over the 25-year lifetime of that system. Um, also, as I mentioned, as these systems become more complex, not every solar company is, wanna, is going to want to get in to other disciplines, right? You're talking about now integrating batteries, EV chargers, load controllers, um, could be intelligent thermostat, HVAC controls. Again, there's more complexity here, but I think there's more opportunity for those companies that are willing to take that on and can figure out a profitable business model to wrap around it. Now, of course, I also think there's gonna be more people out there that choose to do the DIY route, or at least the self-directed route. Meaning that instead of hiring a solar contractor to do the entire soup to nuts installation for you, you may choose to purchase some of the equipment yourself directly from a solar wholesaler and then make limited use of a roofer or an electrician to help with individual parts of the installation that you couldn't handle yourself as a homeowner. So, so essentially the homeowner plays the role of project manager and hires the subcontractors directly, lowering the cost and giving the homeowner more visibility of the overall process. But of course, for those of you who still want a complete professional turnkey installation, choosing the right contractor is gonna be one of the most important decisions you can make. And so for me, I would recommend go with a, a smaller regional contractor that maybe just focuses on one or two or three metro areas, uh, and ideally a company that's been in business for a long time. I mean, in, in my personal experience, the most reliable companies are family-owned companies, and ideally multi-generational family-owned companies where the original founder has already passed it on to one generation and the company was mature enough to survive without the founder's daily input uh, on the operations. So this has been a breakdown of my top five solar market trends in 2025. Uh, of course, if you're getting good value from these videos you see on Solar Surge, make sure you hit that thumbs up button. Uh, also, go ahead and subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so already. That way, as we have new videos like this coming up, it'll come up on your feed and you can stay up to date with everything. Now, of course, if you're a homeowner and you're in the process of looking at different solar and battery storage options for your home, uh, if you are looking for a full turnkey professional install, if you'd like to get a quote from a local contractor, uh, or maybe you already have a quote and you want to get a comparison quote to make sure that you're getting the right equipment and the best deal, as always, you can feel free to reach out to us on the link below here, set up a call with a solar surge expert, uh, or just use the free online calculator to see how much solar and battery storage costs in your area. But that pretty much does it for today's video. I thank you all for spending some more time on the Solar Surge channel. And as always, I'm Joe Ordia here, encouraging you to get prepared and be empowered. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you on the next video.